My name is Robert Graham. I was going to co-present today with David Maynard, but we had a client that called us up about 4 a.m. this morning and has an emergency. Um, so we had to decide who was going to be the one up at 4 a.m. dealing with the client and who's going to be presenting. Uh, my title is CEO, so I think uh, we, we chose to have the correct decision. Uh, the talk we're going to do today is the Lazy Hacker's Guide. Uh, I forgot what TCB stands for, uh, taking, taking care of business. The thing is, is that in our community, there's lots of stuff we know about, like we know in theory that it works, but no one's actually ever done it in practice. And I think a lot of people don't do these things because they already, in their mind, solved the problem, so why go about solving it? So we, we're actually, this is uh, two presentations in one. Uh, one of them, the first one, will be uh, pulling zero-day signatures out of security products. Uh, security vendors often include zero-day information that the public doesn't know about. They include the protection in their products. Well, with our standard re reverse engineering skills, we can pull that information out it, with a lot less work than actually doing our own vulnerability research. So we're going to walk through a case study of that where we pulled the, the ZDI information from the tipping point product. The second uh, half of the presentation will be sniffing Wi-Fi connections. So right now I've got a little Wi-Fi sniffer going that's sniffing the, the Black Hat Wi-Fi, and we'll see afterward what pops up. Now we all know, of course, the danger of sniffing, but what this tool does is, is it sniffs the cookies and the URLs into a proxy server and overwrites your own browser cookies with the cookies it found. The upside of that is, is that I can hijack other people's email sessions. So if you've got a session open with Gmail, then I can hijack that session, then I'm logged into your Gmail. I don't know your password, I just have your cookies. Uh, so uh, we are Arata Security, we founded in 2006. Uh, we do outsource research and development. It, we're a typical consulting firm, except that we've got a product that uh, our hacker eye view assessments, where we take industry threats and write up reports for our clients based upon how hackers would look at it. CIOs often um, get their information from vendors. This is another source. Um, so security can be complicated. Uh, there's buffer overflows, finding those things, a lot of acronyms. Um, but hackers are lazy. Um, we often take the path of res uh, least resistance. So uh, what we're going to show here is a way of bypassing that. Uh, Dave has this nice little comic he pulled out. Uh, okay, at least that size is accurate. Um, so it's Friday night. You don't have any date to the big dance, as Dave likes to put it. Uh, and you have no O day. And of course, you know the, uh, the politics of our industry. All, we all love O day. Uh, I've been, I'm an old timer since the 1980s, where in college it was all, we didn't call it O day back then, but it was all about finding exploits and having secrets and impressing our friends with um, what secrets we had that no one else had. And, you know, trying to impress a girl about, you know, all our, our elite hacking skills. And, of course, um, that doesn't actually work. <laughs> um, so our hacking stuff, we can go through a lot of work. We can learn about operating systems, various forms of assembly, reverse engineering techniques, analyzing crash dunks, uh, reading hexadecimal, um, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, or we can do something a lot simpler. Let other people do the heavy lifting for you. So there are lots of companies that do zero-day stuff. Tipping points, an example, IBM, ISS, EI, et cetera. Uh, by the way, Dave and I come from IBM or Internet Security Systems. So back in the old days, I founded a company, Network Ice, that was bought by ISS, which was recently bought by uh, IBM. So one thing you should take into account here is that I'm a bit biased. But um, that shouldn't matter too much. So uh, all these companies invest in zero-day research. For example, ISS had the X-Force, where X-Force was a bunch of, of engineers. They do lots of presentations here at Black Hat, so you guys should all know them. So it's cutting-edge research to stay ahead of the hackers. Tipping Point has the ZDI program, which is a program that buys from hackers zero-day information. Um, so these companies want to use zero-day protection and their zero-day knowledge as a differentiator. That's why they sell, hey, buy our products, because we're one step ahead of the hacker. So uh, they're trying to win the arms race. So instead of, taking, of dis discovering our own O-Day, uh, why not just take theirs? 
So when we look at these products, we find that there's, they're not actually once they're not too difficult to get into. For example, a lot of security tools, uh, when you get right down to it, when they express the O day they're looking for, they just write a regular expression pattern. So all we have to go is look for that regular expression pattern in the system. Uh, so the one we're going to do in, in our target today is the zero-day initiative from Tipping Point. Uh, there's a lot of controversy around the zero-day initiative, like people saying, well, should companies buy, buy zero-day and encourage hackers or all that stuff. And um, I don't really care much about that. But what I do care is, is that it's a source of zero-day. So uh, it's something that I can go after. So here are some examples uh, of some of the ZDI rules uh, that, as a hacker, there are rules in there, or signatures in there, that I have this zero day in the product, but yet um, during these timelines, they're not yet uh, ex publicly available. There's no patch for it or anything like that. So when you go, when you have a tipping point product, uh, or any vendor's product really, they give you regular updates, and they usually just send you a file. They have a Usually, uh, most all these companies have an account. You log in, you, you download the every few days. There's a new update, and you get them. So, if you want zero day, you know it's in that file. So you have a nice little file on your desk. You know there's zero day in it. Um, and you and you want to find it. So, um, so what you do is uh, you load the file in your in your hex editor. It's kind of annoying. Um, and you look for it. And what we find here is, obviously this is encrypted. There's some uh, structure information at the very start of this file, but everything down below is obviously random data, therefore encrypted. So we look at some stuff, okay, there's a magic sequence at the beginning, it's TPPA, okay, that's tipping point, something or other. Um, but then there's some nice structured data, then there's, uh, one, one interesting thing is payload data. So what we're looking for is, okay, we want to encrypt the payload, or decrypt the payload. Next step is, okay, we got the file, we don't know how to reverse engineer it, so what we want now is code. We want to look at the code that's going to decrypt that file. So, um, in our case, we went to eBay, bought a box, got it. This was a Unity 1 400, it was their 400 megabit box. That was uh, 2,000 bucks. We grab the hardware, we pull open the case. Um, they have a nice little network processor that sits on top, and then a little motherboard, typical PC motherboard underneath. Um, and, of course, a disk drive. Actually, I, I wanted to bring the box here. I actually sent it via FedEx to the hotel, and it's now lost in the ether somewhere. But suspecting that might happen, I did actually bring the hard drive. So this is the hard drive that we pulled out of the box. It's just uh, it's a three and a half inch thing. They actually use a uh, lot of boxes these days. Network equipment use notebook hard drives because they're they're more shock resistant. People drop network equipment a lot. So this is the thing. So all I have to do is just plug it into my PC and read it. Uh, so what it is, it's an ext2 file system. And I just look in the boot directory and there's um, a number of stuff. Before we get to the code, I wanted to point out that there's this log file. Um, and when the product runs, and this is pretty much the same with every product we've seen, uh, they have log files. And the log files are very helpful. They're supposed to be helpful because they're supposed to help the customer support debug what's going on. So here we find um, there's a log file message there that says um, extracting payload into opt update sec um, and package information. That's uh, a nice little string. So what I want to do is, okay, that's a printf string. So I want to look now in the binary. So the binary is VXWorks. VXWorks is a little bit tougher for IDA Pro. Uh, by the way, how many people here use IDA Pro? Number of people. So this is this is the standard reverse engineering tool that hackers use. So I've got the image, I've got the software. It's VXWorks software. I found it on the file system. I load it in IDA Pro. Um, I let IDA Pro, I start IDA Pro doing the analysis. I go away for coffee. I come back and it's 1% done. So I go to bed for the night, come up, wake up in the morning. It's 45% done. It's a 10 megabyte image, but it takes IDA Pro about two days to do its initial analysis. Uh, of it, and it, it produces a 150 megabyte dump. And it's not correct at the end of it. Uh, IDA Pro doesn't understand VXWorks all that much. So then what we had to do was write scripts that would go through and clean up the, clean up the image to something that hackers can, us, we can use. For example, we have to rebase the image and stuff. Um, 
So here's the example script that we use to, uh, to clean up all the stuff. So then, I, now I find the string, extracting the, the payload. That's for the, ne the next presentation. So uh, I go through, I do my, re my re re reverse engineering, um, and I find in the code where that string is used. So um, underneath that string, if you, so near the top of that hex, that code there, you see where the string is. A little bit down later, you see package payload, extra, uh, I don't know if I can point to it very easily, I don't think I can. Uh, package payload extract in the middle of the screen. Okay, that's where the thing is, de uh, is decrypted. So all I need to do is reverse engineer that one function, it decrypts the, the, the package, and then I'm good to go. So that's fairly straightforward steps. It's what every hacker does um, in doing stuff. So the next step is, is with the hex editor uh, program, is a nice little file uh, structure thing. What we want to do is, is reverse engineer the code to see how it's interpreting it. So we refine the, the statements that look for that signature, and we find a number of interesting statements, uh, interesting fields as we're reverse engineering the code. In, a, in this case, there's three interesting fields, one of which is uh, the, the pointer to a key here. If you see up near the second line of uh, stuff, uh, or actually look further down, there's some random data. What, what this pointer is pointing to is the key, the key offset. The way that this file works, this file format works, is that the signature file that's encrypted also contains an encryption key that's combined with a hard-coded key that's encoded in the code. They're just basically XORed together. That's a little bit more complicated, but they're simply combined. And then the resulting stuff is sent to OpenSSL to do the decryption. So it's a fairly straightforward process. So all we need to do is replicate the code that's in package payload extract, and we've got a, a decryption utility. Um, so here's an example of us building the code and that sort of stuff. So, uh, we, so doing this, we can develop a standalone tool. And assuming that my VMware stuff is all booted and stuff. We're going to go and do that. Uh, oops, not that. Sorry, I meant to hit Alt-Enter to make VMware uh, go to full screen, but I hit the wrong key. Now, sometimes when you do this, you just have a hard time finding the on button. Okay, I typed in root. That's not root. Root has two O's. Unfortunately, uh, we set this, this image up and we couldn't get it to suspend correctly, so it's going to sit there. How many people here use VMware? Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Come on. I unfortunately did not as assign enough memory to this, so it's sitting there uh, swapping away like a, like a dervish. <laughs> 